Welcome back, F1 Manager Nation. F1 Manager Legend here. <clears throat> okay, you can see I turned my sound effects down even more. Um, you know, I'll just turn them off. Someone said just turn them off. You guys only want to hear me. So, okay, I listen. Okay, so this is F1 Manager Legend. I am back. It looks like tomorrow we got the Belgian Grand Prix starting. Um, so, here is what you guys need to know about your messages. It, they give you um, this uh, heads up as to the tracks that you are going to be going on. And they even give you the rain percentages, which I think is absolutely amazing. Now, the funny thing is, I had a race that had a 10% chance of rain, and it rained almost the whole race. So, those percentages, they help, but, um, you know, they can be a little bit misleading. I had a race that was 50% chance of rain. It didn't rain during the race. Um, how that comes into play is your driver selection. So, what I have learned is doing these uh, Grand Prix races is that um, in between a race you have you have the ability to change your, your car setup change your drivers um, you know uh, you, can, you can really mess with your setup in between these individual races so if I was doing the qualifying on the Belgium I'm gonna be running Grosjean and Vettel and then every other race, I'm going to be running Grosjean and um, George Russell. Uh, my George Russell is level 10, and he is my fastest driver behind uh, Grosjean in the, in the rain. I have a level 4 Lewis Hamilton, and he's not quite faster than um, Russell. So there's a hint for you guys. And during the races, I got Germany, Belg Germany, first Belgium, sorry, Germany, second Belgium, Italy, and United Kingdom, and Canada. Um, I'm going to say there's a really good chance it's still going to rain at that UK event. That's just one of those wet tracks that it tends to rain on. Even Belgium, that second one, I'm still thinking it's probably going to rain there too. So they give you this up here in the messages, which I think is lovely. And I'm really glad they did that. Apparently I still have messages. No, I don't. Okay, there it is. It's gone. So we are going to be half work on Belgium. I think I got a good We're definitely going to be doing the wet season races. I didn't see any of those. So we got these three. I think we got Spain and Hungary. And then we got these three. So we're doing Series 1, Series 2, and Series 3 races in this next event. So to get ready, I am going to try and work on some new uh, pit strategies for each of these tracks. I just found out on Singapore. Yeah, I just found out on Singapore. I can go f four laps. 
It's a seven lap race, so I can go four laps on hard tires and then three laps on soft tires. The three laps on soft tires will be a little hard to the end, and I'm just going to lose my tires at the very end of the race. So I'm going to try that strategy with all of these other races to see if I get similar results. Nope, can't do it with this track because if I go slow for five laps, I'm going to lose. Alright, well, we're going to try this to see what we get. Gorgon's on the winning strategy. Vettel is on the experimental strategy. We are not worried about Rojan at all. Right now, I am focusing on Vettel. So Vettel, I think, is going to be on a 4-2-2. You can see Rojan's just pacing him. Hamilton made a big mistake in that first chicane. You can see Vettel is dropping positions, but that's okay. He's going to make those positions back up on a pit stop. <clears throat> You can see Lewis Hamilton had to pit after two laps because he was trying to pass me, so he used up his tires. So what did I tell you about those positions? Vettel was down to 16. He's now up to 11th. So Vettel is actually going to get five laps of high power. You can see he's actually passing people with hard tires. Impressive. So Vettel came out in ninth place. He's under high power on soft tires. So he should start making up positions. And it looks like Grosjean's about to lap my second driver. Wow. Vettel's up to seventh. Sixth. So once again, there it is, guys. You can serve at the first half of the race so that you can burn the second half. That is always, it seems like that's always going to be the fastest way. Mm, everybody's in the pits. Came in the pits in fourth, left in second.
So you see how he went off the track, how he slowed down. That's your consistency right there. So when they go off the track, all that smoke that comes up, that's not good. So I'm guessing if you are really wanting to go the fastest, you kind of have to go at high power and then go to low power before the turns so that your driver can maintain uh, his position on the track. I'm not sure if that would actually help, though. It might be a little bit too much work for the good that it would do. Okay, so... Monza, there is no one lap strategy. If there is, I haven't seen it yet. I'd have to be able to get six laps on one of my tires. That way I could go five, could go uh, to lap four, go full power for four and five, and then go soft tires for six, seven, eight. And I know that my tires would run out right before the end, but I think that would cover it. Did Monza? Uh, um, let's see what the next race will be. Hold on a second, I'll be back. Okay, let's see which race we get. Okay, we're back at Italy. See, this is the part about this game that... I don't know, I guess it really doesn't matter. Vettel, I'm going to push you, dude. You are going to go one stop. Sorry. I know I'll get the win. I don't have the fuel for Vettel to be boosting. This might be one of those things where you might actually want to have your first guy do it because he has less track to cover. But we'll see what we get with Vettel. You can see his defending, how he's in that right spot to keep that guy behind him. It looks like uh, Lance Stroll or Sergio Perez. It's most likely Perez because Lance Stroll is horrible. Oh, there it is, Sergio Perez. So even though Perez has soft tires, you can see Vettel is, whoa, what's up with that? How come he went through my car? You can see Vettel's able to keep him behind him. That's, that's how your defending works. I don't think Sergio Perez that has that high of passing either. So it's like strength against weakness.
so Vettel got two and three quarters. Shaw got two and three quarters of a lap with fifty percent tire usage. So that? that's five and a half laps he can go. Okay, looks like I could have sent Vettel a little bit earlier. And now let's see what we get for the next three laps. Stay on the track that time. Good job. Nope, I don't think this is going to work out. You know what? He might be able to carry it. I don't know if that was faster. can't say that that was faster. I don't know. I mean, it might have been easier, but... Alright, give me a different race, please.
Okay, so this is definitely a one-stop race for both my drivers. Ah, you gotta love it. So it appears that Vettel is a quicker driver than Grosjean on a dry track. I mean, we are at Hockenheim Ring, so it should be really good here. <laughs> Why are people pitting after lap two? Oh, that's why. Okay, so we are in. No stacking issues. So we shouldn't have a problem getting a double podium. As you guys know, that's kind of the bar I set for my team is to get a double podium. Anything less than that, I think I screwed up somewhere. Man, those pits are brutal, especially in the second half of the track when my drivers are using high power. It looks like I could have sent Vettel a little bit earlier because it looks like he's going to have fuel to burn. Grosjean, I was stuck with uh, having to maintain the three second gap. Nope, I did it just right. Again, if your drivers don't complain about running low on fuel, that means you've left time on the track. Mars 
Marcellus Cortez. I'm gonna open up some of these crates just because I think I got a special crate coming here pretty soon. Okay. Um, give me Canada, please, 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 give me Canada. Do any of you guys know exactly how the boosts work? I'm still trying to figure that one out. I missed one of the Grand Prix. The one before the New Year's one, I got to... I qualified for it, and then I didn't... I missed the next round. Yes, sir. Another one-stop track. Excellent. Botas just ran him off the track. See, that's the issue with Botas is he doesn't know how to pass. So even though he's on faster tires and you can tell his car is faster than mine, he keeps making mistakes in the passing zone, taking the wrong angle, getting the wrong side of the car. Almost got it there. Oh, almost got it there. There, finally got it. it took him two laps. <coughs> and Hamilton's going to be pitting soon. Sean's looking good. He has all that space ahead of him. Vettel's going to catch up and he might have issues passing. Nope, not having issues. Stacking. Vettel was a little quicker than I thought. It's not going to make that much of an issue. 
because we cleared so much space ahead of the cars behind us that we were able to get in and out without a bunch of cars getting ahead. So now we have limited cars to pass. And they still have to make pit stops. Hamilton is out on hard tires, makes him a sitting duck. Now we have Sebastian Vettel also catching up. And Hamilton just lost a component. There's a one-stop strategy. For Canada. So I, can pr I think I can pretty much do one-stop strategies for most of the races. I know I can't for Baku or, uh, was it, Yas Marina. Those tracks are too long. Well, it looks like all these other tracks, I'm able to get one-stop strategies now, which is awesome. of those. And then we got all three of these races. And I don't think we have France. No, we do have France. Belgium, France, Canada. So now we just did Germany, Italy, Canada. So we still got Spain, Austria, Hungary, and Belgium. I already know Monaco. I got a one-stop strategy for Belgium.